I was looking at this filter, and this is the one I was copying, and his values here are uh, 1.38, he's being very exact, 1.38 microhenries, 1.38 microhenries, and 1.698 microhenries, so uh, 1, 4, 1, 4, 1, 7. And 1, 4 and 1, 7 are not a lot apart. Uh, so I was just kind of wondering, you know, how close they really have to be. So I went ahead and uh, went ahead and made a spice model. Let's see here. Put it on the camera here. I went ahead and made a spice model. Um, if you're going to build a spice model, it's really important that you get the impedances right because this thing is very dependent on the impedances. It's designed for 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out. So if you put in a voltage source, make sure you put in a 50 ohm resistor here uh, to make it a 50 ohm impedance on the input and then put a 50 ohm on the output so uh, it measures correctly. And so the way that I uh, made the model was I used the capacitors that I was using, the 340 and then two in parallel, which is 680. So 340, 680, 680, and 340. And then uh, I went ahead and just uh, started modifying the uh, inductors and, I, and I, just, I put them all the same. So I ended up with 1717 and 17 for all three. And here's what I got. Uh, we'll go a little wider for that one. So yeah, it looks just like what we were measuring. So uh, it looks like it would be fine. There's a little dip here. So I mean, it's not, you know, it's not classically a perfectly tuned filter, but for these applications, you don't need a perfectly tuned filter. It's just fine. Uh, you know, a Butterworth filter is maximally flat here in the pass band, um, and then it, it does not have any ringing. A Chebby Chev will roll off faster, but it will have a, a it'll have some ringing in it. But anyway, um, so yeah, so right around here is seven seven megahertz, and then it'll roll off hit fourteen megahertz. It's it's nice and it's nice and way down. So I think these values will work uh, will work just fine. Okay, so I'm going to go to the junk store and see if I can't. Uh, I'm going to buy some more of these, uh, uh, more of these uh, Torrids since they were so cheap. So I get some of those, and then um, and they do work. I mean, now that I've tested them, they, they do seem to work at least up to uh, up to seven megahertz. I haven't tried them at higher frequencies. A lot of times these will not work past a certain frequency range. Um, if it is a true yellow, I think it's type six. Then it's good up to I think 50 megahertz if I remember right. Um, and I'd need to move to something else if I want to do uh, 144 megahertz filter and stuff. But anyway, that's a different day. Um, so uh, I was curious about how many wines does it really take? Now there are formulas. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if I go here to the uh, to the uh, handbook here, this is the. Uh, uh, this is the ARRL handbook, and I think, I think in the back, I think it's chapter 21. Let me look. Nope, 22. Yeah, chapter 22 has to do with components, and somewhere in here they talk about. Here we go. Talk about inductors. So let me uh, let me move the camera over because I can't move my book over; it's too big. Let's see here. Uh, so powdered iron toroidal cores, inductance and turns formula. So the uh, number of turns required is a hundred times the square root of L over A, where L is the inductance that you want, and A is the inductance index. And the inductance index, I guess, is the permeability of the uh, of the material and stuff. But anyway, it, it should go as the square root. Uh, let's see here. So L should go as the square uh, number of turns squared. Yeah, L oh, phew, right here. L equals a times number of squared uh, number of turns squared, and then they give some uh, sizes and stuff here. Um, you can see down below here, it talks about uh, colors of, of cores, and it says yellow is type uh, 6, and it has a permeability of 8, uh, mu, mu of 8, 
and uh, it's good for yeah, good for 10 to 50 megahertz. So that's good. So if I want to do two meters, I'm going to have to get something that'll run up to here to 200 megahertz. Let's go up to 100 megahertz. Let's go up to 200 megahertz. They start to be lossy um, at higher. Okay. Anyway, so number of turns. So how does my inductor react? Okay. So I did. I did this. Uh, let's get that all on camera. There we go. So. Um, I had an inductor that was wound to 21 windings, and I measured it with my LCR meter, and I got 1.9 microhenries. And then I unwound a winding, and I got 1.8. And then so I kept unwinding, and I kept making measurements as I unwound. All right. And so uh, if you like graphs, here's the graph, um, and it seems to follow a straight line: um, number of turns versus microhenries. So it's following a pretty, pretty straight line. Might have a little bit of curve. Might have a little bit of curve to it, but pretty straight. And then at flat spots, you notice here at the end, uh, the, the differences between uh, two turns, one turn, and zero turns was all the same. And zero turns? What do you mean zero turns? So uh, I ended up with a piece of wire about uh, 18 inches long, and just a, a, a length of 18 inch wire uh, had an impedance of about 0.6. So um, really what I should have done is every time I unwound one of these, I should have snipped off the wire um, and, and kept it short every single time because the wire does add into it. So this adds, it adds an offset to all these things. But what I'm really interested in though was um, when I snip things off, you know, how much is one turn and what's the range of this thing, right? So uh, these uh, these toroids here, then I can build inductors from about, I'd say, 0.6 to 2 uh, microhenries. So that's a good thing to know. I'll write that down in my notebook. And uh, yeah, like I said, well, I think they might even have a, a, a second core at the junk store. So I might, I might buy one of those too and see if... Uh, I think it was a big giant one. I don't was we're not really interested in that one. It was a really big one, and I wasn't really sure what the uh, what the permeability of that one would be. When you go when you go into making balance and stuff, it's really really important to get the uh, material right. Um, with filters and stuff, I can measure them. So, I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not sure if I can measure balance yet or not uh, correctly. So, never I've never attempted that before. But yeah, this is a fun exercise. Um, I will uh, see if I can't maybe build a, a uh, cleaner version of this um, and, uh, and try it out.